So a majority of people in the United States have insufficient vitamin D levels. And this is a real epidemic in my opinion. Now, low vitamin D levels, so below 30 nanograms per ml. Now, some sources will say below 20, which I think is really pathetic. But uh, those low levels are really predisposing you to viral infections, cancer, and other diseases. Because adequate levels of vitamin D don't only protect you from pathogens like viruses and bacteria, but they're also highly protective of cancer. And uh, vitamin D, together with K2, and I've done a, a video about this, can actually um, decrease the number of cancer cells that you have, can help to trigger apoptosis in cancer cells, decreases cell division in cancer cells, and it's, it's a very selective process. So having adequate levels of vitamin D is also, from a preventive strategy, highly important, in my opinion. Now, when you look at the reference range further, then now a lot of sources warn already uh, about levels that are higher than 50 nanograms per ml. Now, the reference range is between 30 and 100 nanograms per milliliter. In my opinion, a good level is somewhere between 50 and 90 nanograms per ml. You don't have to go above the reference range. Some people think that's a good idea. I don't think so. There are risks of hypercalcemia at some point, right? Hypercalcemia is more an issue if you do not take your vitamin D3 together with K2, magnesium, and zinc. These always should go together, those four, okay? So, Again, importantly, most people have levels that are way too low. When you're testing, and this is important as well, I would recommend to stop taking your vitamin D supplement about two days before your blood test. Because if you don't, you might have an artificially high level. It might be higher than what's representative, actually. Because you take that tablet in the morning, then you do your blood test, right? So these levels are a little bit higher than, than they actually should be. The half-life of calcidiol, that's what we're testing for. And that's not the active form. The active form is calcitriol. Um, however, that has a very short half-life. But the calcidiol is a good representative of how much uh, vitamin D you have in your system. And that half-life is about 15 days, okay? So again, I think uh, opting for a reference range somewhere between 50 and 90 nanograms per ml is uh, the right goal here. What's also interesting, so you look at some of these sources and they're saying, well, levels up to 100 nanograms per ml should be reserved for when we're treating cancer or heart disease. So they know that there are anti-cancer properties in vitamin D and it's helpful in those situations but it should be reserved for when treating active disease, which is really ridiculous in my opinion. We should prevent disease as much as we can. And again, 50 to 90 nanograms per ml, I think is absolutely fine. That's a good range. Difficult for most people to get to, but um, you know, again, with supplementation of all these four ingredients, again, I'll repeat them one more time. I know this is a bit ad nauseum. Vitamin D3, K2, magnesium, zinc, they should always go together, right? But when you have those optimized, again, you're protecting yourself from viral illness, we know that during viral illness, we think back to our pandemic, the people that were admitted to the emergency room, they had a lot of pathologies and one of them was very low vitamin D levels. They then gave a bolus in the hospital of vitamin D on the order of 100,000 international units, some crazy number like that. But at that point, it's almost too late because it does take time for the vitamin D to get in the system. And then what does it do in your system? It helps your immune system. It helps your immune cells to function well. But that takes time. And so when you already have a viral infection, giving vitamin D at that point is really not helping a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So again, preventive strategies, don't go overboard. Do the blood test. Uh, do a blood test. Uh, so two days before your blood test, you should stop taking your vitamin supplement to get an adequate representation of what your levels actually are. And um, as long as you stay within that reference range, I think that's a safe way to do it. It's highly protective. We don't get enough sunlight anymore. People don't spend a lot of time outside. It uh, dropped by about 50 or 80 percent, uh, depending on the source that you're reading, of how much time we spend in sunlight. In the winter months in the Northern Hemisphere, also keep in mind that we don't have adequate UV radiation to stimulate vitamin D production. And that's the main way we actually make vitamin D. It is in some uh, foods, it's in eggs and in, uh, it's in milk, certainly when, when it's fortified as well. However, these are small amounts. So most people don't get enough from their nutrition. I believe supplementation within reason is actually necessary. You should do it smart. You should have all these other cofactors with it. In the summertime, of course, the best way is to get it from sunlight. Don't be afraid of the sun. Don't burn, of course. But don't lather on all these chemical sunscreens and all that and, and, and tons of clothing. I mean, spend time outside in the sunlight. Just don't spend too much time there that you get a sunburn. Like you should, of course, have less than that. Somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes a day is ideal. Hopefully this helps. Again, do the blood test, but two days before, don't take the supplement.